Hi everyone, welcome left. back to another episode on Conan Exiles, The Beginner's Guide. We're going to focus on attributes, why these are important to progress in the game, uh, what different types of skills are out there, and what each die. one does. Then we'll try to cover some of the uh, different sorts of workbenches that we have, uh, how to craft them, and what they are. And then right at the end we'll probably get into a little bit of the cooking and food and where to source and how to cook it. So let's begin. Hi everyone, let's begin with attributes, probably one of the most important parts of the game. So as you can see here, we have a different list of attributes and these will determine the focus that you want to take throughout the game and what you actually want to advance in. So players are given a maximum of 390 attribute points once they are level 60 to distribute among the attributes listed. The cost to increase an attribute scales with its current value. To increase an attribute value in the range of 1 to 5 costs 1 attribute point per attribute. Values increased AP per AV, attribute points and attributes value. But to increase an attribute value in the range of 6 to 10 costs 2 attribute points per attribute value. Okay, let's go with strength, the first one on the list. That really does focus on the melee damage. Um, as you go up, you can raise truncheon blows by 100% more concussive damage. You can also deal a 50% increased damage to the enemies. Um, your light attacks will range 10% more on damage and heavy attacks 15%. I'd say this is a true warrior's attribute. You also get a plus 2% melee damage for every attribution point spent. Next up is agility, which uh, covers iron endurance, cat-like reflexes, effortless leap. So sprinting drains 25% less stamina, falling damage is halved, and jumping no longer costs stamina and as you progress to the very end of agility attribution you can actually do a double jump as well as nimble tumbler when dodging your armor counts as double which is probably a very important aspect to have in these unforgiving lands right let's get into vitality that gives you a deep breath where your breath timer is doubled impervious all temperature effects are now diminished fierce vitality where you can gain passive healing regeneration, which is super important. Uh, receptive, increases the healing effects of consumables and dancers by 100%. And then right at the end, then when you progress right up there, you will also get eating food will count as a healing potion. It, I think it provides 10 HP healing bursts, which is very important. Right, we'll move on pretty quickly here. So I'll just drop the next two in and then we'll go on to the last two. So the next one is accuracy. Real quickly for accuracy, it's pretty much there in the name. It's going to help you gain um, sight on your bow. Crippling shots, shots fired will ricochet as you move up in attribution. Um, ranged weapons will deliver 10% more damage. And then headshots also. So headshots to deal a 50% um, damage. Then we got the grit. Grit is um, one of my favorites actually to spend my points in. It, it it's uses 10% less stamina whenever you climb. You gain additional 10% stamina regeneration per tick, which is an incredible one to have. Um, you gain a natural resistance to damage. Again, sort of like a human armor. Nice. Um, your basic attacks will cost less stamina, and then dodging will also cost less stamina. Okay, next up, encumbrance, which you'll deal 10% extra melee damage while over-encumbered. Um, You'll get crippling effects which are less severe, your max carry weight will increase by 10% and you'll also be able to be fully encumbered and move at full speed. And then you've got survival which you means you won't have to, you won't have to cook um, raw meat to avoid food poisoning, you can just eat it. Uh, you can harvest resources and nodes twice as fast. Every animal harvest will produce extra resources. And the invulnerability um, to poisons and diseases. 
Okay, workbenches or crafting stations. There is around 20 different crafting stations from fires to furnaces or blacksmith benches for weapons, torture tables for, well, torture devices. And as you settle in, you'll find an urgent need to craft these stations and get progressing. I like to dive straight in with the furnace where I can start melting down iron and then usually find myself building an armorer's bench to get the armor so we can go out battling. You can also upgrade these benches as you progress further into the game. Be careful to make sure you have plenty of room. As I said, there are over 20 of these stations and that's not including the upgrades. And finally, food. We're not gonna go into the full list of them because there's lots of it, but food is easy and plenty to come by. Um, pretty much any animal will give you flesh. You can also, um, interact with bushes for insects now that won't last long but it will get you out of the shit if you are dying of hunger um, you will also find that you can get feral flesh from um, these weird little goblin creatures to get the flesh you do have to harvest each animal so it's worth getting yourself a skinning knife or making one um, you can harvest with a axe but you won't get as many resources back from them and yeah, be sure to always cook the food due to food poisoning. Along the way, you will also find mushrooms and other things that you can eat and cook up. Um, also, some human flesh. It's probably not. Be it's probably best you don't cook that or eat it for that matter, unless that's your sort of thing. If it is, then ew. And be careful, as the meat does have a use-by date and it will turn into putrid meat if you don't cook it and eat it fast enough so one of the things that you can secure and hold food for longer is if you build a thrall pot and store your food in there and that's it guys so thank you very much for joining and i hope it helps and i'll see you at the next one